Our MC, Kanata Tamukai, glares towards the moon as an eccentric woman tears him apart. The woman keeps piercing him with her knife while uttering his name. At this point, Kanata realizes that his death is imminent as he loses consciousness. Right after, Kanata regains consciousness, questioning why he remains alive and why there is an ugly green old fart standing in front of him. The old fart names him Gobru and feeds him a weird insect. Eventually, Gobru notices that he is surrounded by multiple green ugly babies and the fact that he's one of them. This makes him realize that he has been reincarnated into another world after his death. On day 3, Gobru is already an obnoxious brat. At this point, Gobru has come to terms that he's been granted a second opportunity in life and decides to make full use of it. On day 4, the old fart provides them with their last meal and instructs them to put food on the table themselves. Gobru then leaves the cave for the first time ever and realizes that this world is quite different from the world he came from. He also comes across another goblin named Gobkichi and starts ordering him around like he's some big shot. In being a dumb goblin, Gobkichi starts following him as well. During the past three days, Gobru has noticed that Gobkichi is physically the strongest goblin out there and chooses him as his hunting partner. Making use of his previous life experience, Gobru and Gobkichi manage to capture a wild rabbit. Gobkichi gets ahead of himself and attempts to devour the rabbit by himself and gets punished by Gobru just like the old times. After this, Gobru pulls out the rabbit's horn to use as a weapon as suddenly, a weird message appears in his brain, stating that he has acquired an animal horn. This shocks Gobru a bit, but he doesn't pay much heed to it and proceeds to hunt. Both of these ugly goblins keep hunting rabbits for fun and Gobru acquires another skill named Escape after consuming rabbit meat. He realizes that he had inherited his previous life skill absorption that allows him to eat anything he wants and obtain skills from them. Even though all his skills from his previous life had been reset, he is confident that he'll acquire them again. The following day, a female goblin named Gobmi starts simping over Gobru since she's a gold digger and seeing her desperation, Gobru offers her to accompany them. However, much to Gobmi's disappointment, it rained the following day and they had to stay back. In the meantime, Gobaru decides to forge a new weapon for himself and accidentally comes across naked human women trapped in the treasure room. Gobru, however, had no interest in them and leaves without doing anything. He then gets approached by the old fart who comments that Gobru might be able to level up rather hastily owing to his determination. He further tells him that once he reaches level 100, he'll be able to evolve into a hobgoblin. The old fart is also excited about the return of this village's hobgoblin and the prey they'll bring this time, giving an ugly smirk. The following day, Gobmi the simp also accompanies them to hunt, and it turns out she's not as useless as Sakura. This time around, they manage to capture a snake which grants Gobru some extraordinary abilities like Venom, Search, and Evil Eye. He keeps blabbering about his skills, but Gobmi and Gobkichi fail to comprehend what he's saying. He doesn't even let Gobkichi consume the snake head and eats it himself. On day 10, they come across a mysterious cave and decide to explore it. As soon as they enter the cave, a massive horde of bats ambushes them. Gobru instructs Gobmi to escape while he uses Gobkichi as a shield and manages to kill some bats. After consuming the bats, Gobru acquires some other skills as well. Meanwhile, the other goblins had gotten jealous of Gobru's endeavors and decided to teach him a lesson at night. Luckily, Gobru's search ability warns him about the impending threat, and he beats the living shit out of them. Even Gobmi gets angry on his behalf and subjugates one of them. The following day, the trio manages to kill a freaking orc and Gobru acquires some more skills. After eating to his fill, he instructs Gobkichi and Gobmi to pack the remaining food and takes it back to the cave. He had realized that the goblins are just as useless as they look and decided to become their sugar daddy. That night, Gobru receives a message regarding his evolution and accidentally accepts it. The following morning, he wakes up to find that he has evolved into a handsome jerk alongside Gobkichi. Seeing this, Gobmi starts simping over him even more. Gobkichi then gets ahead of himself and challenges Gobru to a fight, only to get his ass whooped. After this, the trio hunt down a pack of wolves and take them back to the cave. Gobru allows the useless goblins to eat to their fill, but on one condition. He wants them to return whatever they consume and even promises to teach them hunting. He also announces that the goblins are all his comrades with the intention of using them as corporate workers who have no rights. The goblins are too dumb to realize this and start chanting Gobru's name. On day 17, Gobru wakes up old fart Gobji and reveals that all the human women have committed suicide. To hide this information from the others, they hold a secret funeral and burn their corpses. 
Gobru realizes that all these women must have been devastated by the treatment they were getting and eventually decided to drink poison. From that onward, Gobru kept training the useless goblins to forge his own army and also gain some extraordinary skills as well. Just then, the previous generation of goblins also returned from their expedition and had brought human women with them as well. Being a human in his previous life, Gobru demands to keep the humans for himself which infuriates the hobgoblins. Before the matter escalates, two other goblins appear at the spot and suggest a duel between Gobru and the previous leader. Gobru beats the living shit out of the previous leader just like my abusive ex and becomes the leader. With no other option left, the other hobgoblins have no other option, but to subjugate. With this, the human women are also Gobru's property now and he reassures them that no one will lay a finger on them. He also guarantees their necessities and in return, Gobru demands these women to teach him human knowledge. The women reveal that they were a part of some hunting group and were ambushed by the goblins mid-journey. All of the men were killed and the goblins kept these five as hostages. Moving forward, Gobru provides the women with food and further learns about their occupations as well. The blonde siblings are both cooks and tailors, the four-eyed woman is an alchemist, and the red-haired baddie is a warrior. Meanwhile, Gobru keeps training the goblins and even mocks them which makes them question their entire existence. One day, as it is raining, Gobru and Gobkichi engage in some serious sparring session which further heightens their inferiority complex. Later that night, the goblins decide to violate Gobru's instructions and have a steamy night with the humans. However, Gobru somehow gets the air of this and absolutely folds these mischievous and useless goblins. Seeing Gobru's guts, the humans start crying like a little bitch and Gobru orders Gobmi to take the goblins outside. He makes an example of these goblins in front of everyone and even kills off one of them, so no one would try something like this ever again. Following this, Gobru, Gobkichi, and Gobmi go up against the trihorn horse and somehow manage to kill it with Gobru's skills and Gobkichi's insane strength. Upon consuming its meat, Gobru acquires some extraordinary skills including scale drive, quick healing, and triple thrust. With this unique skill, Gobru just needs to swing his sword once and the attack automatically multiplies. This makes him realize what actually makes the trihorn horse such a formidable foe. Later that night, the red-haired baddie decides to sleep with Gabaru because she was scared and it seems like Gobmi is no longer the ultimate simp. As Gobru wakes up, he finds Gobmi sleeping beside him as well. After this, Gobru and the others discover that another useless goblin named Gobei has evolved into a hobgoblin. Meanwhile, the training proceeds as Gobru has divided his army into different groups and assigned leaders to them. Gobkichi is the captain of the heavy warrior unit, Gobmi is the captain of the long range unit, and Hobsato is leading the light warrior unit. He also wants to form a mage unit under Hobse, but it turns out that she's the only mage in the entire village. Leaving the training under the captains, Gobru decides to slack off for a bit and heads deep into the forest. Upon confronting a trihorn horse, Gobru decides to test his magic skills and takes out the unicorn with his first stage magic, Gay Durg. He keeps venturing into the forest until he comes across a blood-laden pathway and remembers the warning of that old fart regarding some big-ass bear residing in the north of the forest. With no regard for his life, Gobru ventures further into the forest and eventually comes across the red bear and challenges it to a battle. Meanwhile, Gobmi and the others are extremely worried about Gobru and wonder where he headed off to. Even though they are sure that Gobru would return safely because he is strong, Gobmi is still worried. Meanwhile, the red bear sacrifices its arm to avoid Gobru's direct magic attack and counterattacks with its massive claws. Gobru then attempts to pierce its skin, but realizes how tough it actually is and has to step back. He even utilizes that spider web to trap him, but the bear frees itself rather easily. With this, the bear emits a massive fire breath which Gobru barely manages to survive. With no other option left, Gobru reinforces his entire body with water magic to counter the bear's fire breath and even manages to pierce its mouth. Despite all this, the bear smashes Gobru into a tree. Now that both of them are gravely injured, the battle can swing in anyone's favor. Even though the odds are stacked against him, Gobru is enjoying this battle as he ambushes the bear once again. Following a long battle, Gobru has finally managed to defeat the red bear, but lost an arm in this process. After consuming its meat, he acquires some fascinating skills and falls unconscious. His level has also exceeded a certain level and now, he can evolve into an ogre. Gobru accepts the evolution as he is falling asleep and when he wakes up, he notices how massive he has gotten and realizes that he has evolved into an ogre. As he ventures back to the village, the goblins start fearing him because they fail to recognize him. 
However, Gobmi immediately recognizes him and scolds him for everything. Gobru also apologizes as the other goblins still cannot comprehend that Gobru managed to defeat the Red Bear and evolved into an ogre. Gobkichi and the others are skilled to see that Gobru has evolved into an ogre. Following a meeting with the elders, Gobru decides to visit the human prisoners with Gobmi and the Red Hair following him like some random NPCs. Upon seeing Gobru's ugly pathetic face, the girls get scared and start tweaking. Gobru somehow manages to calm them down as Gobmi keeps pinching his leg for no reason. After this, Gobru meets the swordsmith girl who informs him that she forged a knife with the spirit stone which shocks Gobru and he pats her for this. Meanwhile, Gobmi and the red hair are still pinching his leg. Gobru then meets the cook who wants him to grant them some helping hands with the cooking and stuff. Seeing this, Gobru comments that they'll make excellent wives in the future and even proposes to them to become his wives. He must have hit his head in the previous head as he fails to comprehend why Gobmi and the red hair are hitting him. Following this, Gobru comes across the alchemist who was brewing some poison which makes Gobru question the reason behind it. The girl asserts that she was making it for self-defense, but after seeing that a goblin like him is protecting them, there is no reason for her to keep it. Gobru is unintentionally rising up all the women in this cave. The following day, Gobru realizes that he cannot train with the other goblins because they are literally useless and he is damn overpowered. He is overpowered to such an extent that a single punch is enough to fatally wound a goblin. With no other option left, Gobru spends an entire day with the other goblins and observes them. As they are having lunch, Gobe rushes inside the cave with an injured carbuncle in her arms. She informs him that she found the carbuncle while digging up a dungeon and Gobru heals her without wasting any time. After she wakes up, Gobru explains the situation to her and the carbuncle introduces herself as Latana. According to her, she was attacked by humans and upon hearing this, Gobru immediately realizes that it must be because of that gem on her forehead which is a high-ranking material. Latana then begs Gobru to get rid of the humans and further informs him that she was created by a magician named Velvet and that he would prefer that Gobru takes his treasure instead of those humans. With this, Gobru decides to persuade the humans and reassures the human women that he won't hurt them. Upon reaching the dungeon, Gobru instructs Gobkichi and the others to hide as he'll try to persuade the humans. As he is exploring the dungeon, he comes across some losers who deem Gobru as a random monster and decide to ambush him. Gobru, on the other hand, manages to evade their attacks rather easily and attempts to persuade them to leave this dungeon peacefully. The human adventurers, however, persist that they will invade the dungeon and steal the treasure. Gobru was keeping his calm until one of them actually struck his head with lightning magic. This pisses him off and he beats the living shit out of them. Just then, Gobkichi and the others also reveal themselves and contribute to this battle. After devouring the humans, Gobru acquires some unique skills including Assassin, Crusader, and some others. He also obtains some high-class equipment as well and much to everyone's surprise, he consumes these items and obtains some extra skills like an interdimensional box. Following this, they reach the treasure room where Latana expresses her gratitude and allows them to take all the treasure with them. Moreover, it seems like Gobkichi has also started simping over Gobe. With this, Gobru and the others empty the entire treasure room. Gobru then notices the magician's dead body and decides to burn it. Much to his surprise, the magician was wearing armor and as soon as he grabs it, the armor becomes a part of his body. He realizes that the magician must have passed on this legendary item to him since he didn't need it himself. Upon reaching back, Gobru distributes the magic items to the hobgoblins and keeps some legendary items for himself including a vermilion spear and magical bracelet. Using this equipment, they gather the ingredients for bear soup and the following day, they also hold a tournament to choose a leader. Since Gobru cannot battle the goblins himself, he decides to venture into the forest. He immediately comes across a gold spider and acquires the skill Golden Thread. After this, he comes across a red deer and acquires some more skills. Following this, he comes across a massive tree where he comes across a dryad. According to him, dryads in this world tempt males from other intelligent species and use them for their nutrition. Seeing Gobru's dazzling muscles, a dryad approaches him and even though Gobru tries to calm himself, he still gets tempted by her charm. With no other option left, Gobru decides to unleash his inner beast and gets laid by the dryad. After all this, he heads back to the village where he finds out that two goblins have aptitude for magic and Hobsay will be training them. Gobru also notices that the girls are acting weird towards him which shocks him and he questions everyone about it. Finally, the alchemist reveals that Gobru actually has a visible love bite on his neck and the girls are jealous about it. 
Seizing the apert unity, the alchemist girl kisses him. Just then, the other girls also appear at the spot and urge Gobru to do the same with them as well. With no other option left, Gobru decides to give all of them a taste of himself and also announces to take responsibility if anything happens. 